If you're working in a distributed application, you're bound to run into the issue of wanting data consistency between services. In this video, I'm gonna work through an example to explain the design challenge, as well as different solutions on how you can handle communication and data consistency between services. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. This question in the use case and example that I'm actually using came from a question from a member of my channel. If you're interested in joining, get access to a private Discord server, where you can communicate with myself and other like-minded developers, check out the links in the description on how to join. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So here's the example use case that I was asked about. We have a system where there's kind of two boundaries that we're gonna talk about. There's a payment boundary service, which is responsible for taking subscriptions from customers. So a customer uh, signs up for a subscription, pays a certain amount of money, they get that subscription. And from there you can see in the lower hand here, that's where the payment is dealing with a payment gateway, let's say Stripe for example, and then it has its own database where as people are signing up for subscriptions, you may kind of lapse your subscription or sign up for a new one, and you essentially have a balance. So the balance of what you paid for your subscription. You also have another boundary at the top listed here, which are for orders. And this is the idea is that when you sign up for a subscription, you're getting orders uh, delivered to you, say daily. And those orders have a cost. So every time an order is shipped to you, we decrease the balance in the payment service. So this is kind of the context and the use case that we're talking about. So as well for this example, I'm making assumptions. I don't really have deep seated knowledge about this system or this domain, but I got the overall gist of the question asked. One important note here as well, is that like any type of subscription service, is that they do allow you to kind of lapse your subscription in case you your reoccurring payment fails, let's say your credit card expires that was on file, or for whatever reason. So what happens is when that occurs, they don't stop you sending that order daily to you. Let's say there's kind of a two day grace period where if your uh, subscription lapses and you have no money in your balance, they'll still send you an order for two days in probably notify you that you have to sign up again. And once you do, then that amount, that balance will be decreased by the two days that you actually missed. So that's an important factor as I work through this example here. All right, so here's some workflow that we have is that we have a client that's gonna continue their inscription that's lapsed by say a couple days. That means that we have a couple orders that we essentially haven't paid for yet. So our client hits the payment service and continues their subscription by say providing their credit card details. At this point, we hit the payment gateway, whatever that may be, um, charge the customer's credit card. Then we update our, our database with probably likely that transaction, some transaction ID, and update our balance in the database. From there, what we're doing is we're publishing an event to the broker that the subscription has been, say, renewed, and that order service is subscribing, is consuming that event. From there, what it's doing is that it's looking at its database to understand, okay, what are the orders that I haven't, um, that haven't been paid yet. So it looks at the database, sees, okay, there's two of these orders that haven't been paid yet. So it's then making a synchronous call, blocking call. This could be an HTTP call, gRPC, whatever the case may be. Some type of blocking RPC call to the payment service saying, hey, I have these two orders that you haven't paid for. So go to your database, reduce uh, the balance on hand that you just added to it because there's these two orders that you um, haven't paid for. Once that call's done, then the ordering service can then update its database saying, okay, yeah, these two orders now, we're good, we're complete, they're paid for. So the member of my channel that asked this question really had kind of two concerns. The first was, as you can see, they're using events, so they're using an event-driven architecture, but they were concerned, well, aren't we kind of going against the grain here now that we introduce an RPC call? So that was one of their concerns. The second one is, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is about data consistency. And that's because that RPC call that we introduced from orders to payments, when payments decreased the uh, balance in its database for those two orders that were outstanding, once that blocking call was completed, orders at that point needed to update its database saying those two orders were paid. But what happens if there's a failure? We've updated our payments database with the correct, the new balance, but we haven't updated our orders. So we have some lack of consistency here now where we're gonna have orders that don't look like they're completed, that don't look like they're paid for, but we've already decreased the balance. One option is to remove the RPC call and move to messaging because each message and how we're consuming it can be executed 
independently and we can deal with failures per kind of message that we're consuming. So, and that's because with messaging, you just have more ways and more resilient ways of dealing with failures. You may want to do an automatic retry. You could do some exponential back off. And if a me message keeps failing, you could just move it to a dead letter queue and deal with it separately. You're not actually losing any of the workflow. If there is a failure, you still have that initial request as a message. So what that looks like is when our client is renewing their subscription, we hit our payment gateway, we charge the customer's credit card, we update our balance and set the transaction. Then we still publishing our event saying the subscription was renewed. Our ordering service is consuming and subscribing to that event. And at this point, when it's looking at its database for the orders that have not been paid, it then, instead of making the RPC call at this point, it can then send a command to our broker to a queue that our payment uh, service is actually consuming. So now this payment service is gonna get that command, that message that the ordering service sent, and it can deal with updating the balance um, for those two particular orders. At this point, there's different variety of ways you could do this. It could be a reply or it could be an event, but let's say it's a reply using a request reply pattern. I'll have a link in the description on how this works with asynchronous workflows. But we're sending a reply back to the ordering service for that specific message saying, yes, I've completed um, the updating of the balance of these two orders. The ordering service can consume that, understand it's these two particular order IDs, and now it can update its database. But as I mentioned with messages, if there is a failure when we're processing that reply and there is a failure, we can do a retry. We don't actually lose the message. We may send it to a dead letter queue, et cetera. There's a bunch of different ways that you can handle failures, but you're not actually gonna be losing the message, which is the reply to update your database and change the status of those orders to paid. Now you may be thinking, and hopefully are thinking, okay, that's great. So we remove the RPC call. We have a little bit more fault tolerance but we could still have a balance that's not really reflective or consistent with the order statuses. We still have orders that potentially look like they're unpaid if we haven't processed the reply yet and our balance reflects something completely different. We still don't have consistency, maybe eventually consistent, assuming that message actually does get processed. So one solution to this is to use the reservation pattern. I've covered this in other videos, so I'll have a link in the description, but the idea is that you're creating a time-bound lock on some type of resource. In this case, our resource is the balance. If you're familiar with a credit card, an authorization is exactly this. It's reserving funds for a period of time. So my end service bus saga, which to illustrate this, is gonna do the authorization, as well as a timeout that if our orders aren't set as paid, we can cancel that authorization. If our orders do get set as paid, we can kind of complete the transaction. So I have everything being kicked off here by the subscription paid event that we're consuming, and then we're gonna send a reconcile unpaid orders. Orders at this point is gonna look at what orders are outstanding and it's gonna be sending command to authorize those amounts. Once it does so, we're gonna get an amount authorized that we're gonna consume. From there, we're gonna set our orders as paid because everything's been authorized, but we're also gonna set a timeout for 10 seconds, just as some random number that I decided, but that's gonna be our threshold for if the orders aren't marked as paid within 10 seconds, we're gonna basically do a cancellation of that authorization. So once that timeout occurs, we can send our cancel authorization to the payment service, which basically whatever internally it's doing to keep track of authorizations and our balance. And then if the orders actually are set as paid and everything worked with it, then we can complete the authorization to as well update our balance. So now we're consistent with what our orders say and what the balance is. Now there's one more solution, which I think actually might be the best solution, which is not to have the issue of data consistency in the first place. Meaning that we have this orders that has a status and we have our payments on the right, which has a subscription, which has a balance. And these are what we're trying to make consistent. Just remove the need to have them in two different boundaries. Why exactly does the ordering um, boundary, that particular service care about the status? I'll get to that separately in a second here. So let's idea if let's move the status out. So what happens is, is now orders doesn't have the status on the, in the ordering service, but we're taking the concept of orders and recording that as well um, on our payment side. So we still have our subscriptions, which has the customer ID and the balance. And the balance really is accumulation of the, the transactions and the orders that have been paid. And, but now we have the concept of orders within the payment service itself, which we have the order ID, the status and the amount and as well as we have transactions still. 
So what happens is when an order is actually placed or created, we can just simply update its database, but then be publishing an event of an order placed event that our, our payment service can be consuming. It then can record what the amount is, the order ID, um, and then at that point, mark it as just unpaid. We can then look at the, uh, what our balance is and immediately mark it as paid if we have funds. So we don't have to worry about necessarily about communicating back and forth on whether something's paid or unpaid. We know that immediately within the payment service. So going back to the original use case now, where we have our client that is renewing their subscription, when they make that call to renew the subscription, we hit our payment gateway, we charge their credit card, then we record that transaction, but now we don't need to communicate with the ordering service to do all this workflow. We have that data directly within our database about which orders are unpaid. We can just look at that those immediately and update those within the same transaction. We can be immediately consistent and we can reduce our balance, again, all within the same transaction. Now, if we do wanna provide orders, the ordering service with information about what's paid and unpaid, we still can create an event and publish that to the broker and then have orders pick that up and then update their local database. But at this point, the status itself of an order is owned by the payment service, not the ordering service. So why did the ordering service have an order that owned the status? And then we had to do all this communication. I think there's two reasons. The first is because we're only ever thinking about the concept of an entity, say an order, and that concept can only live in one place and it has the be all end all. But it's not, it's really about taking that concept and the data behind it that we really require in other services for rights and for consistency. The second is because we're thinking about oftentimes about queries and how we want to display data. We're often thinking about, okay, well, the ordering service owns everything about an order. It's gotta be able to show that it's unpaid or that it's paid, et cetera, when really we can compose that data from multiple different services. And that's exactly what some of my next videos are gonna be talking about, is doing UI and view composition, where you have data and multiple different services and you wanna compose that into a UI or some type of response to the client. So make sure to subscribe if you're into these topics. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. Thanks.